Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and our geopolitical military analyst, uh, often putting extra special reports over at live stream. Uh, Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling is his fancy title. Uh, you can go to Europe Business, B I B U S I N E S, with one S dot blogspot dot com, or just type in and search for Lord Sterling. You'll find the Europe Business dot blogspot uh, blog. And what's the latest stories beyond <laughs> the Petrus Romanus? We talked about this in hour one with Dr. Bob well, there, Field. There, there's a few things on that that I, I, I would like to cover. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead. Kind of g- g- good and bad uh, on the man. I was impressed with how he asked people to bless him uh, when he came out on the uh, the balcony uh, last night when he, you know, he won. And uh, I was. Uh, uh, you know, he, he, he stopped at a school this morning. He, he's done a couple things that uh, are positive, but they're positive in a Hollywood sense. Um, the last two popes have been what I call Hollywood popes, John Paul II and Benedict the Sixteenth. They had the, uh, you know, they could walk in the white robe really well and bless people, and uh, John Paul II especially because he had been an actor, was very good at working crowds. But the real uh, way to judge a person is in power is what do they do with their power. And uh, the the Roman Catholic Church with 1.2 or 1.3 billion people, its own little country, and this enormous uh, position that the head of it, the Pope, has, uh, could do a great deal to combat uh, the evil plans of the uh, global banking cartel elite Uh, but they are mired in a sea of scandal uh, really of their own making and And what what, what do you expect when when 50 or 60 percent of your priests are gay I mean it's not just that the three areas we talked about last week is uh, the Vatican has a possibility of returning to original Christian doctrine we have the the issue of the trying to do liberalization, I believe that priests should marry, but I don't believe in, in liberalizing to the point where we have female priests. Well, Number I agree. Two, I, and, and and I, the, the I think what we have is a situation where... The dogmatic where, difference. Right. I think also we have a situation where we have ecumenism start by Benedict the Sixteenth. that if it's continued, eventually they'll develop a super religion I call a whore religion, where they accept Islam and other... Uh, non-biblical quote, forms or sub-forms of Christianity that well, basically... Well, where I disagree with you is I think John Paul II actually started that. Yeah, I'm just uh, saying that the major force behind that, but behind the scenes, even before he was the Pope, was Benedict. When he, Even before he became Pope, over the last 40 years, he's been one of the driving forces behind it, even while the other Popes were the guy in the helm. Yeah. Um, now, when you look at that uh, Pope Francis, uh, the the some of the criticisms Francis of Assisi, being, yeah. yeah, well, yeah, well, maybe it was actually probably Francis Xavier, but uh, the yeah. the uh, Jesuit. But uh, he's a Jesuit. Now, I've had uh, professors that were had. Were, were Jesuit trained, and I can usually tell a Jesuit trained uh, oh, instructor. How do you how do you tell? Uh, there's 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 just something about them. There's there's a there's a a, a, a a clarity to their thinking process or something. It's it's hard to uh, it's hard to tell you. But yet when I've been around them, I uh, I, I say hmm, and then I'll, I'll check the, re- the biography or, and uh, or the resume. Ah, so, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let, let, let me let me crystallize it a little bit different in the metaphor. There's a clarity in their understanding of the deeper knowledge of what really makes and runs the world. World. Because uh, the Jesuits are high-level Illuminati Masons, and they are very powerful, and within the church they are feared. Yeah, well, I'm not sure the average one is is Illuminati Mason, but there's some. But uh, all Jesuits are. All Jesuits are. Well, anyway, uh, the, 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 the criticisms that have been raised against this new Pope Francis have to do with his cooperation with the military government, um, and it's a, a number of years ago in Argentina, and the crackdown on the leftists. Now, um, of course, there are two sides to that. Uh, the fight against the leftists, which included uh, communists by the military, was not all bad. 
uh, you know, you got to remember that communists by nature are deeply involved in tyranny and, and dictatorship. But there was much that the military did uh, in that time period that was very, very clearly unacceptable and, and, and human rights violations the whole bit. But that all tends to be how the military tends to handle things, regardless of right. where the military is. Uh, you know, uh, he's got uh, Francis Pope Francis has about a two week honeymoon period where he can do no wrong. And in that two week, if he is serious about cleaning up the mess in the church, he will now announce an end to mandatory celibacy by for priests and bishops. And uh, I will announce something like the suggestion I made where the, they take uh, the permanent deacons who are married and offer to uh, ordain a large number of them as priests fairly quickly. Uh, but you have to break up the gay mafia that is controlling the Catholic Church. And there are a lot of serious rumors that it was so bad that that was what really pushed Benedict the Sixteenth over the edge. That it was just he. It was getting so bad he that he couldn't handle it. And I have seen that in seminaries where they were actually very glad. People were very glad they closed them because the things had gotten so far out of hand. You've had seminaries uh, where literally the straight people were just about driven away, and you you got to the point where almost everybody in the seminary was gay, and they were calling one another by girl names and so forth. I mean, just, if the, if the, if the average Catholic had, would see some of this stuff, which I have seen because I studied to be a deacon up close, uh, you would just say, oh, my Lord. And uh, it, 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 there yeah. is a house cleaning. Also, this bit with the curia, uh, at a high level, it's often said that the, the difference between the mafia, the high levels of government, and the church is non-existent in Italy. And um, there, there's a real question is, will he really reform the curia? And who knows? You know, who knows? Uh, an outsider, uh, so he may. Um, who knows? I, I think uh, the Malachi prophecy is correct. I think Pope Francis is the last pope. He's he's Petrus of Rome. And yeah, he's uh, of Italian he, descent, but he's also of Argentina. He's a, a Jesuit. Yeah, his grandparents came from from Argentina. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, most of the people in Argentina are Italian descent. Uh, probably eighty percent of them. And uh, uh, I, I mean, I had Italian neighbors. I love Italians, and and I love Rome. Uh, they're a little, you know, uh, yeah, they couldn't talk if you tied your hands behind their back. But uh, uh, I, I, I was enriched by having Italian neighbors, is, is the way I put it. Um, yeah. but, so uh, let's get down to some of the basics, uh, Tim. Uh, we have a number of fulcrum events happening. We have uh, Petrus Romanus now in. Yeah, he's probably going to follow through on the ecumenism of that goes back to, as you said, one of the earlier popes, followed through by the current pope that just resigned, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. We have a uh, situation that's on the nice edge of a war in the Middle East. The armistice has gone between North and South Korea. China and Japan are at it, literally threatening back and forth. And Japan, by the way, is a nuclear power, even though people don't want to admit it. A very, very large nuclear power. Right, and very large, probably the third nuclear power behind the United States and Russia, before Britain and France even, is Japan. We have also uh, a situation where Russia is totally ticked off with our placement of anti-missile systems because Russia over the last 20-some years has been retooling their military for a takeover and reemergence of the Russian Empire. They now control oil and gas supplies to Europe and all the military developments of the strategic rocket forces Jets, etc., that are being built in China by the Chinese government are all Russian designed. Well, we're, we're marching down the road to World War III, and we continue that march. Yeah, that, that. and uh, yeah, under this, it's, it's sped up. This year is a year of change. Back in a moment with Tim. Welcome 
back to the Nutra Medical Report. Uh, let's continue with uh, this analysis, Tim. Uh, the situation uh, around the world, if you look at the soberly and you look at the prophecies, you look at the geopolitical analysis, you can see that things are definitely way out of control. And there's a number of what I call trigger events that could push the civilization to the break point and also push people to make bad decisions. And I would say the, uh, the agenda, if you look at the prophecies, you look at the analysis of Pope Petrus Romanus, if you look at the globalists like Obama that's trying to hand us over to foreign enemies, you look at the acquisition of 1.6 billion hollow point bullets and uh, bulletproof armored personnel carriers by the government, the Department of Homeland Security, all of these elements taken together expects that there is either an invasion, an extinction level event, or some global cataclysm that's going to precipitate a, uh, a revolt by the public against what's going on or attempt to survive some extinction level event like a Carrington style super uh, storm on the sun that could knock out the power grid. But we are. Well, the, the definitely globalists mar- feel that there are seven over seven billion uh, mostly unnecessary eaters, and they would like to whittle that number down by over six billion. So there's You're less kidding. than a billion people left. Right. Um, so that's a lot of people that have to die. By the way, all of us uh, uh, talking and listening to this are among those unnecessary eaters. Uh, but you can count on the fact that the the billionaires and trillionaires are are, are not. They're 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 not on the list. Necessary. <laughs> you want to hit some of the other high points of the news items you want to talk about yeah. today, Tim? Well, uh, the French foreign minister uh, is saying that. Um, France and the UK will send weapons to the uh, foreign mercenaries that are fighting in Syria, despite a, a uh, EU arms embargo which prohibits us in action. Now they're asking them to to change that, but they're basically saying right up front, even if you don't, we're going to uh, ignore uh, that arms embargo, and we're going to ship uh, arms to the the so-called militants. Um, that is in insane because Syria is the back door to war with Iran. Iran cannot maintain its position, uh, its security position, if Syria falls, and everybody knows that. And um, before they will allow Syria to fall, the missiles will start flying. Uh, So the NATO and Gulf Cooperative Council and Israeli position on Syria as well as Iran is insane. It's insanity. Uh, It's like walking into a giant uh, powder keg warehouse with a flamethrower and letting rip and then being shocked that uh, you're being blown into a trillion bits. Um, you know, it just uh, it, 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 it boggles the mind that you have governments uh, doing things which clearly point to, to launching a third world war. And that is the greatest moral imperative of the day. We've got to yeah, stop we're, it or, or we're going to all die. We're also in an economic phase of that war already. I, oh, I tell absolutely. people, if you look back in the 1890s, we're actually we're in World War One, not in 1914, but in the 1890s. If you look at World War Two, we're actually into World War Two in the 1920s. We weren't in the World War Two in 1941 or 42 or even 38 when it started. In some areas where they started invading into the Sudetenland. What we're dealing with is we're actually in the economic phase of World War Three right now. Uh, and we're seeing these alignments happen. The uh, social networking that was set up with the Arab Spring, the five years ago mounting war between Sunni and Shiite Islam in the Middle East is part of that. The increased if, rhetoric if you read the North letter North. from Albert Pike that was written about 100 years ago that was on display in the British Museum for decades until one of the Rothschilds got on the uh, board of directors, uh, he spoke clearly of a coming three world wars and he pretty much laid it out exactly how it's happened so far Uh, and and, uh, this was all necessary to bring about their new world order. Albert Pike was a former confederate general Uh, he was the head of the uh, the Masons uh, 33 degree Mason he was a Satanist and that's a matter of historical fact and uh, his knowledge of what was to come had to have been gained by demonic uh, means. Demonic channeling. 
Yes. Uh, no different than the uh, contact between uh, King, um, uh, the King of Israel, King Saul, and the Witch of Endor when he the quote summoned a demonic entity that pretended to be Samuel. Really, no different. Yeah, well, and the Bible is very clear about, you know, seances and stuff like that. It, 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 the warning is very clear, and uh, some people ignore it at their pearl, uh, peril. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, there, I, there's an interesting article I, I linked today, Being Employed Today versus 1970. I just happened to be talking to a buddy of mine last night, and uh, he's... Uh, he had been unemployed. And now he's making about a thousand a week. He's working about sixty hours a week. But he said, "You know what?" He said, "This is about what I made uh, in the the seventies." He uh, was a seller of uh, high end audio equipment, and uh, he was great. Uh, he, you know, he he was one of the best. And he was bringing home uh, about a thousand dollars a week. Uh, he was very young. He blew it off, but. Uh, the the difference and of course a thousand dollars then was more like four thousand a day. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. It, it it everything uh, they're they're robbing us in every way possible. Well, what they're and, doing is creating a fire cell of everything on Earth because and by the way, this isn't just about accumulating all the wealth on the planet. And we said this the other day. We tried to bring this out with Theodore Shabbat. We would bring it out with other experts. The globalist plan, and you have to get this, okay, even if it offends you, assaults you, upsets you, you have to face reality. The globalist plan of Agenda 21, of the Council on Foreign Relations, the Royal Institute for International Studies, the Bilderbergers, etc., all these guys, Bill Gates, is mass murder of most of humanity on the planet. They want to get rid of that. Yeah, that is the, that that is, and 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 they have articulated this. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's there was, public. This the is fact not is, just some conspiracy theorists sitting around dreaming this stuff up. Well, uh, this well, stuff is very clear. Uh, look at uh, uh, Ted Turner, who says the the population of the planet should be somewhere between three hundred and six hundred uh, million people. What, what gives him the right to think that he's narcissistically empowered enough to know, to say that? And then we have the comments here in the news that you posted up at the top of your news items. Paris, France, and UK to arm Syria, and of course Mr. Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, has warned them not to do this. Yet these fools are arming our foreign people that we're fighting against in, in Afghanistan and Iraq, the same people we're giving flak jackets and weapons and communication systems to do a regime change in Syria. This is indefensible. This is completely BS. And I like your 5 BS meter flag award that's right below. 5 BS flags, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really quite amazing. And, of course, now that they're trying to make uh, statements of Assad's preparing to use chemical weapons, this means that the so-called Syrian Free Army, which are neither Syrian nor free, which are foreign terrorists, are, have captured chemical weapons. They're going to try to blame Assad when they use them. Well, that's what's coming next. So we're telling you in advance, this is the next scheme, and it's going to piss off the Russians. Don't expect a nice response from them. And just as an intro, we're, we're going to review just what I mentioned a minute ago. We're going to have Chris Harris talk. We, he's been uh, doing consulting work. That's not his real name. That's his, his radio name. He's a NRC nuclear safety consultant now for the Korean KEPCO, which is trying to make sure with a new engineer who's now the female president of South Korea, and she's smart and sharp as a tack and doesn't take any nonsense, which is bravo. And what we have is a situation where South Korea doesn't want tsunamis, earthquakes, or just stupid engineering to cause a disaster there. They're the first country, by the way, to put nuclear detectors, radiation detectors, out there in their grocery stores so you can walk around, see if the fish go click, click, click. Uh, today also they announced in the news the discovery of the Higgs boson. Now, uh, this is one of the things that I, I, if you Google my name, you'll see all kinds of detractors and stupid comments like Dr. Deagle uh, killed a patient, did this and that. And I want to review this before I get into this. Uh, number one, the patient they're quoting was misquoted by the Federation of State Medical Boards and the, and the Board of Examiners of Colorado because they came after me because I was releasing information and fighting them, the state and industry in court. This gentleman killed himself with drugs he got from a emergency doctor and his own psychiatrist appointed by the courts. 
this is a lie and my background is very broad including working for the government with FEMA with the whole with basically the federal government FBI hazmat teams as a Q level security clear at US Space Command Strategic Defense and before I went into Madison I was recruited to go into nuclear physics at MIT they were arranging a special scholarship to do plasma nuclear physics I went into honors biochemistry and finished my PhD research project in five months at age 21 I finished it which would have taken at least five years in five months and because my grandfather was dying I switched and went into medicine at 21 was already specialty training at 24 so you gotta understand here when I say the Higgs boson is a big deal it's not like a nothing they have over the the Hadron Collider the symbol of Kali the destroyer of worlds okay the Hindu goddess the destroyer of worlds we have and this is uh, I'm going to quote Mishukaku we have level one is a civilization that can control the power of the planet which means it can start off earthquakes volcanoes plasma physics it can start off superstorms pumping uh, Tesla Scalar electronics warfare. Scalar warfare it can, it can do what's called Scalar warfare over a city it can create a hundred megaton explosion without firing off a missile America and Russia have these weapons five nations have weather control weapons five that I know of from my classified sources which means we can start off earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis uh, in fact there's really good evidence that the tsunamis struck uh, Sendai, Japan and I've talked to engineers including Professor McCanny that this is all the characteristics of an artificially created tsunami it was not a typical one and I've done, analyzed it now for two years that's significant. Now the Higgs boson, how it ties in. I agree we have, with that analysis, by the way. We have a number one, we have a level one civilization controls the power of the planet, which we've had for 50 years and they lie and tell you they don't. Number two, we've had nuclear fusion, tokamak fusion generators that fuse helium-3 that's grenaded on the nuclear reactions on the surface of the sun. When you fuse helium-3, you create a plasma directly and they have miniaturized these engines and have them in our Aurora space fleets. We even have entire fleets of interplanetary space vehicles that they were quote taking out of service or upgrading in 2010 and have upgraded to even more advanced vehicles. Number three, our space programs and our intelligence uh, in terms of space development is shut down under Obama and now NASA basically has gone black ops. So people like uh, Edwin Musk, you know, Mr. Musk, the, uh, the director and owner of PayPal, uh, the Sabbatean Jew actually is the one who now is running the Dragon satellite system and supplying the U.S. space uh, program at the International Space Station. So what's going on is all this has gone black up. Uh, so we have level star power, which is nuclear fusion power. And now with the Higgs boson, we have the, the proof of the Higgs field, which is the field that can create literally torsion fields or wormholes. So we're talking about interplanetary space travel, tapping into the black hole, the energy that creates literally the Higgs field that organizes the mass that creates stars and planets, because the Higgs field occurs first before the mass agglomerates and forms stars and planets. That's why the mass at the center of every galaxy is 2.5%, and there's a constant recirculating of matter and energy that exits the black hole in space time through these vortices to create the stars. And so there's literally, it's a living thing. If you want to look at the, at the each galaxy, is a recycling thing that recycles that mass and energy to form stars. So people the, need the to understand problem is this is we a don't very have big the deal. Morality to handle exactly. Now, I want to explain what, what we're doing is right now, the South Africans, because they're block just like the Israelis and they developed a pebble bed reactor system which the Israelis and South Africans developed that's the most advanced non-dangerous nuclear system the can do is probably the second with from Canada thorium is still dangerous and all the older style reactors including mark 1 mark 2 reactors and the steam turbines which is the one like at San Onofre are dangerous as hell none of the plants are moving radioactive debris off their site and all of the design flaws and problems in Fukushima we have not dealt with here in America in the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and CAPCO has an engineer president now of Southern Korea that actually saying oh my god I don't want this to happen to my country so uh, that's a little intro I want you to tell us what are the bullet points Chris so people understand we need to move to safe nuclear technology and by the way you're not going to get away from nuclear uh, the idea is that people say, well, Dr. Deagle, I thought you are an environmentalist. Yes, but all of the nuclear we have is old and stupid and needs to be changed and upgraded. There's a principle called peak oxygen. 
if you keep, keep on killing the benthic layer of the oceans, if you keep cutting down the rainforests and paving the parking lot, like Joni Mitchell's song in the 1960s, you cannot have a planet that doesn't have lungs. The lungs of the planet are the upper 30 feet of the ocean. 80% of the oxygen is generated by these little phytoplankton. And when you turn the key to your SUV or your car or you have a coal plant, that fuel is not, is not, is not, is not fossil fuel. That's a lie. That fuel is abiotic created by the nuclear reactor called planet Earth. We live literally on a nuclear reactor with a crust on it called the surface or the lithosphere of the Earth. So, Chris, tell us what you told Kepco. Chris, are you there? Have you had a seizure? Uh, system might have dropped him. I didn't have a seizure. I had you. I had mute. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. No, just, after I, I had to go to a, as I, I recently had somebody say, I, I went and contacted you, Dr. Deagle, but when I Googled your name, I came up with half a million or a million hits of all the horrifying things you did. I said, you know, you need to smarten up. Anybody with the cajones to say what I say on the air, anybody with the brains and the guts to be a believer in the Most High God that's going to say this, and believe me, if I wasn't a believer, I wouldn't do what I do. And I'm not presuming to be anything special yeah, yeah, and I'm not a hero Dr. and it's Bill, not an excuse I've, I've, for I've, there are a few bad things about me and one one guy just lied through his teeth and I, right. I even hired and uh, tracked him down in Belgium and uh, the guy is a, is a convict and he has no money and if I, I if I sue him all it will do is cost me money and right, you know yeah. well, the point is this I, I'm setting the record be straight because and, uh, I, well the you're, thing you're is a good guy. It, Here's, here's the point. The point is, if people don't know what I'm saying is true, or at least worth reevaluating, as I tell people, they don't have to believe me. Go and reinvestigate yourself and then go quietly somewhere, pray or lay in one of those little water beds or something so you can get your body calm enough to get over the shock of what I'm telling you. And then just kind of get over it and make a decision of what you're going to do. Now, I'm not telling you what to do. This is not a cult. I'm not running the Scientology kind of cult thing here. What I'm trying to tell you is when we tell you these things, whether it's engineering things about why we don't have a corium catcher under our nuclear reactors like TEPCO didn't have, they didn't have a seawall, they didn't have spider silk Kevlar tents, they had faux uh, engineering for the Taurus so that they, they argued initially over whether they should or shouldn't release the hydrogen, which caused hydrogen explosions that lost containment of the nuclear reactors. Reactor number one in TEPCO actually was destroyed by the Earth earthquake long before the tsunami even struck because it's right on the fault line we have a number of issues that are in the same reactors here in America of all different kinds of designs that criticality can occur, loss of containment can occur, uh, blackouts of power, uh, we call station blackouts, a ton of engineering issues including the fact that these, these pipes, a lot of them, literally, literally wear right down to tissue paper and they've had plants south of Chicago, I've had my nuclear contacts tell me, where literally they went in with a brush to set, check the, 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 the piping and it was literally the th thickness of a piece of paper. That's how nuts this is. And people don't understand they're constantly being irradiated by around 120 miles around every nuclear reactor in America and always have with, with tritium, thorium, radioiodine, and other isotopes. We're back. I'm going to hear from Chris after my little rant and get some details about KEPCO. Welcome back. So, Chris, uh, I had a little rant there because once in a while I got to take my whack-a-mole bowl, bowl bat out there, my brick bat, and hit down the people that I have what we call vicious ignorance. Uh, I don't put through the sweat and hard work and the prayer to say what I say every day, and people need to understand that the breadth of my background and where God's put me is just because I'm a servant of the Most High God, and I'm not presuming to be anybody special. And by the way, don't do any hair up worship either. That pisses me off even more because I want people to pick up any issue that they feel in prayer or in circumstances they need to do. Because if most Americans, for example, start to prep, if most Americans just evaluated the truth and said, hell no, we're not going to do this, we'd remove Obama by impeachment, we would get America back on track financially, we'd pull back from, we'd become energy independent from crazy countries like the Muslim countries. We'd we would not give Mohammed uh, Morsi this uh, any one dollar of money when he's planning on attacking Israel and our allies and has sworn an oath against America and the West. We would not do any of this crap. We would have nuclear reactors properly upgraded to be safe. We would face the truth of the fact that we're killing the lungs of the planet. We'd get rid of pseudo-environmentalists and make a new form of international crimes to the Hague. 
so that when people push carbon tax garbage or they don't stop to plead uranium rounds used in warfare which violated the Geneva Accords since the 1940s that we would put them in prison for a form of scientific fraud uh, like uh, you know Igor I call him Al Gore so we need to deal with these issues and so if you have a problem with Deagle have the balls to call me up and talk to me face to face on the phone don't go and make blogospheric stupid statements without te- checking with me on the facts Okay? Fair enough. Got it? Got it out there? If you think yep. you have the cajones, you call me, and I'm going to take care of you. And when I finish with my conversation with you, you're not going to be the same. Got it? So if I seem a little angry, you can't even... I, the word anger isn't even contain the <laughs> spiritual rage. And it's not a rage of, my ego has been hurt. I don't have ego issues here, even though people think, oh, he's just a narcissistic egomaniac. No. My issue is I'm so concerned about my wife, my children, my family, my fellow Americans, my fellow human beings, the very skin color of the Code of Joseph on this planet, of the planet itself, of omnicide, of egomaniac, satanically ruled, stupid idiots that don't want to realize what we're doing to the planet our geological, our biological history, our genetic heritage. This is the end game. This is not like a big rehearsal. This is the end game. This is it. This is the big show. Yeah, you know, uh, Chris and Dr. Bell, uh, I, I linked an article here today. Sicken Alaskan animals getting more tests for Fukushima uh, radionuclides. Uh, evidently, the the uh, number of sickened animals in Alaska is is really climbing. Uh, well, of course they're getting sick. For first off, they're getting sick because there's a direct airstream carrying radionuclides across to Alaska. Not only that, there's the permafrost is melting like crazy in Alaska, but Antarctica, the ice sheet is increasing. So people just say, this is not global warming. We're actually heading into an ice age, but the under-oceanic volcanism that's occurring in the Gakal Range, which is 1,500 kilometers long under the oceans, with peaks higher than the Swiss Alps, these are volcanic peaks, okay? It's going crazy. People don't understand that the earth literally is in birth pang. So I talk too much right now. I want to hear from you, Chris. Uh, okay, what's you know, going on with Kepco? Fine. Okay, in Korea, uh, yeah, I've, I've talked about my team. You know, I've, I've alluded to my team that we've been on some other projects together, and, and uh, a meeting was set up, and at uh, some request, uh, the... Uh, South Koreans, I say South Koreans, we're not hoping North Koreans, of course. Uh, South Koreans are uh, very concerned about a Fukushima type accident and uh, in, in their, their country, and for, mainly for, for a lot of reasons. But number one, they have uh, sites that are as big as Fukushima. That means six units and others being constructed as we speak. So they, they have, uh, they've seen, uh, they've examined their own, uh, their own command and control structure and they said, you know, we're, we're lacking. And we want to do something about it. They're, they're asking for our help. In Kutsuri, I find that to be it. It's an honor. And uh, also, they're under the gun for doing it because their brand-new president, who is an electrical engineer, by the way, she is mandating that, that actions be taken now. And there's a whole lot of work to be done. Uh, some of the uh, ideas... Um, in fact, uh, you know of one of the other fellows who's presenting today. I presented for two days, and another fellow is down there now. Down there means in the in the Washington D.C. area. They came over here for that. Um, right. Uh, so the other member is Joe. So he, and and uh, we're all talking about different aspects. We have to prepare uh, uh, a fairly large presentation and, and make sure we we can speak to these people who are very bright. They're all they're all Ph.D. level, and yeah. they all speak. Yeah, the, the, the Koreans are top notch, and uh, let me tell you, they're they're totally freaked out by what happened in Japan. They're also freaked out by the crazy policies of the North Koreans because the North Koreans, in a half an hour, as you said, the military expert uh, Tim Alexander, half an hour air air attack with these tubeless rockets, and South Korean Seoul is devastated. So we have three nuclear powers: Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan aimed at every square inch of Russia, China, and the Kazakhian, Kazakhstan, and every former Soviet CIS nation literally will become dust and ashes. And it's not just those. America has weapon systems hundreds of years ahead of any other country on the planet. And that's why the Russians and these other countries, if they have any sense at all, won't do it. But the Muslim nations are stupid enough to do it. Iran is stupid enough to fire one or two nuclear missiles, and then most of Elam, which is the uh, western territory of Iran, will become obsidian glass. 
It's also called pteridium, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> pteridium, yeah. So, I was really touched upon with the uh, developing. There was a lot of confusion in Japan about when should we vent and when should we not vent? When can we admit sea water? That's because they didn't build the proper even uh, uh, hydrogen uh, venting systems, which we put in America, but the Japanese didn't do. The General they Electric Corporation and the Japanese at TEPCO decided to put a full hydrogen release system in the Taurus, and we went over through these data. And, you know, what what recommendations did you give? You Give me the bullet points, well, and what are they going to do about them to actually stop the danger of a tsunami, an earthquake, or some other superstorm event that could devastate? Because most of the reactors in South Korea are sitting right on the coast, aren't they? Yeah, we're examining their procedures. Their command and control structure found it also that they're, they're lacking in, uh, in someone to make the final decision to go ahead and to vent or not vent, or in this case, to admit uh, seawater or, or not. Uh, instead of arguing over for days like they did in Fukushima, and they are very willing to to accept that idea and go and go forth with that. Also, there are uh, the uh, idea of passive systems that could be used at, in uh, response to an event like that. Uh, they are very open to the idea of um, installing new systems and systems that don't require any power at all. Now, it was actually quite. Uh, it was a quite relief to, to hear people saying, you know, it, it's expensive, but we're going to do it anyway. And uh, and and, and they, Chris, they how does that? Long. How does the the, the 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 systems work? Are you talking about uh, really tall water tanks that uh, are gravity fed? Yeah, that, yeah that's, that's 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 one idea, and we've been talking, and they were accepting of that idea because I know we talked about that on the show. Uh, right. Two years so, ago? I mean, hold on. Has it been that long? Yes, it has been that long. Yeah. Um, so so, they, so that's a good idea. No, they didn't buy yet the corium catcher or the seawall yet. They didn't buy. Yeah. Uh, they did buy the idea of an upgrade to the Taurus and the hydrogen release system. They did buy the idea that they need to have better protection. For example, most of the air intakes of the diesel generators around these plants are low enough that if there's a water, uh, let's say it's a tsunami, it runs over and turns off the diesel generator, so you lose backup power. And the most you people aren't aware that if the, yeah, all those things are issues. Are they going to talk about those? You know, we 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 talked at great length of uh, of a particular. We we chose a site, and I had all the uh, uh, materials prepared. And I said, "Here's where you got problems. Here, here, here." And they were very accepting of that. And they they realized that Good. full well yeah. that flooding is a certain issue there. They do not. By the way, they do not have general electric uh, boiling water reactors in Korea. So I just Good, but now who, who built their reactors for them? Uh, who was the manufacturer? Uh, well, for, uh, the first generation were uh, uh, com uh, combustion engineering, and then after that they started manufacturing their own design based on yeah, that. Yeah, the, and, the uh, Koreans have used what's called the, uh, the, uh, the Beijing model for industry. They take it apart, become better engineers yeah. than the original people, and then try to re-engineer it. I guarantee you countries like South Korea, five or ten years from now, will be the manufacturers of the best, safest nuclear-powered engines. And when people say, oh, we've got to get rid of nuclear, I said, you're an idiot because you have to stop consuming oxygen. You have to stop and consuming they, they know oxygen. That too, and they're, they're not going to abandon it, but they are going to work very hard. Right, but uh, then you should get rid of old technology, upgrade it eventually to pebble bed reactors, get the radioactive waste off site, and make sure that eventually they move to nuclear fusion and plasma transmission lines, Dr. which Phil, we could. They, they, they didn't even smirk when I mentioned solar flares. They were very accepting of that, too. Yeah, and the Russians, by the way, put a major paper out on that in the last few days. We talked about it yesterday. A major paper on it with Harley Schlanger and the LaRouche Foundation. The Russian engineers and scientists and physicists are fully aware of this year in danger, especially the first week in November when that super comet passes the sun at 700,000 miles and will create a superstorm and a Carrington event. So pay attention, everybody out there. Get ready. It's going to start rocking and rolling.